everybody. Uh, I've been watching some videos on YouTube and, you know, talking to people in comment sections and other people's videos and stuff, and, um, uh, I was kind of inspired to, to, um, make a video. It might be a little long, but you won't be bored. <laughs> so, um, I want to start out with this. Um, I was, I grew up in the organization. I didn't join it as an adult, and growing up in the organization is a little bit different. You know, um, you see things differently, experience things differently than if you joined in your, your 20s or something. But what happened with me was this. This is how my family worked. Um, Mondays, um, I'd get home from school and I'd have to um, do my chores, of course, and then my mother was sick, so I had to um, do the laundry, family laundry when I got home and um, walk the dogs and stuff like that and make dinner and then um, Monday night was the night that our family got together and studied for the Tuesday night book study. So we would sit as a family on Tuesday night and do all that. Then after after the book study that we had after dinner, then I could do homework. And sometimes it got really late and I got tired and I couldn't do my homework. Um, Tuesday night, um, I got up in the morning at um, 5 o'clock in the morning, um, made my dad's lunch and filled his thermos with coffee and um, said goodbye to him on his way out the door. Then me and my brother got ready for school. Um, we went to school, got home, um, did any chores we were assigned, got ready to go to the book study for Tuesday night. And then um, we would go there from 7 until, you know, we were gone until 10, 10.30 at night. And then I had to do my schoolwork if I wasn't tired and exhausted already and get some sleep. Um, Wednesday, Wednesdays, like I say, every day of the week, Monday through Friday, I was up at 5 a.m. Um, my mother was sick. I mean, she, she didn't do anything, really. My mother didn't. Most of the things she was supposed to do were delegated to me and my brother. And, and then we get in trouble if those things weren't done, even though it was my mother's responsibility. So, you know, it was, that was kind of twisted in my family. <clears throat> and then um, Wednesdays, we would um, study for Thursday night meetings. You know, you had, um, we had the theocratic school, so we had to read a, a specified section of the Bible to prepare us for the meeting for Thursday. And then if we had a talk scheduled, um, we had to um, um, prepare our talk, which took several days. And after our, our book study, then I could do my schoolwork or whatever. So Thursday, like I said, was um, theocratic school night. So that was from 7 until 9. We didn't get home till 10. And then I had time. Maybe I could do my homework for school if I wasn't too tired. A lot of times I didn't get it done because I was getting up at 5 a.m. and doing things that my parents weren't doing. You know, so... Let's see, that took care of Thursday night. Then, um... Friday, um, Friday we got together as a family and prepared for field service on Saturday. So Saturday morning we got up and went into field service. And we would do field service from 9 sometimes until um, uh, 1 p.m. Sometimes we were out until 4 p.m. And then when we got home, then we would um, study the, the watchtower um, 
section that we were going to be going over in Sunday's meeting. So after we would study that at night, then we could do our homework and go to bed. Um, Sundays we got up <clears throat> and went to the hall. As I recall, we were at our hall at 9 or 10, something like that. I don't remember exactly. But um, we did that meeting, and then um, a lot of times we went in service after um the watchtower meeting and talk. We would go on service Sunday afternoon again after that. And um, Sunday evening was a little bit slow. Sometimes I could catch up on homework if I had it for school. And then, you know, Monday it was all over again. But it was watchtower <coughs> preparation or meetings every day of the week. If we weren't going to meeting, we were studying for the next meeting. So, you know, it was study, meeting, study, meeting, field service, study, meeting, and then all over again. And um, I remember they had a, a Watchtower um, broadcast last year. I don't remember which month it was, but... They, they did this thing where they had a jar. Maybe you all remember it. It was a jar. And in there were all these marbles. And the marbles were for all the things you were... So, I think it... Well, either or. I forget which way direction it went. But they had rocks and they had marbles. <clears throat> and I, as I recall, it was the rocks that stood stood for things that you wanted to do that weren't watchtower related and the marbles were for the watchtower stuff that you needed to do your requirement requirement that you were supposed to do and you had to see if you could fit these rocks in this jar for things that you wanted to do and still get all the marbles in the jar you know with making them all fit they had to all fit you know and so they made this point where if you had to sacrifice some of the rocks, meaning personal fun time, if you had to sacrifice some of those to be able still to get all the marbles in there, that's what you were supposed to do. So they were telling these little kids, and it was, it was funny because they're telling these little kids now, if you can't get all the marbles in there, then you have to sacrifice one of these rocks. You know, so when it was all said and done, in order to get the marbles in, there were a couple of rocks you couldn't get in there. And those were just things that you had to sacrifice. But he, he says, well, see, you can still get some of those rocks in there, even though all the marbles got to go in. You still got time to get some of the rocks in. And, and I'm thinking, come on, <laughs> you know, supposedly they're supposed to be Jehovah's Witnesses because they want to be, right? But instead, they're telling you by this marble and rock thing that the, all the marbles got to fit. You got to get all the marbles in there. But you have to sacrifice your your fun time, family time, whatever. You have to sacrifice that time to make sure you get in all the watchtower time. And I'm thinking this is insane because... When you're a kid, you want to find time to go play in the dirt. You want to go climb some trees. You want to ride your bike. You want to play play with other kids. You want to um, go see a movie. You want to do all those things. But so many times you can't because Watchtower stuff takes over that time. You know? And... Like I say, they even show it, rocks and, and marbles. Make sure you get all the marbles in there because, you know, and you can sacrifice some of the rocks, sure, right? And see, you can still get some of those rocks in there. So, you know, Watchtower doesn't take up all your time. And I'm thinking, my God, they didn't take an account for the time you need to cook and eat and take a bath and sleep, <laughs> you know? You can't get... Hardly any rocks in because you got to do that during the day. It's not like you're going doing fun stuff and not sleeping that night. You know, it's like, well, 
I want to go do this, so I'm just not sleeping tonight. And I'll, you know, I'm like, what? <laughs> but, <clears throat> but I'm saying, Watchtower takes up so much of your time and a lot of your effort. And even family time that we had together, our family time was um, only made up of doing Watchtower things. Even our family vacations, vacation, we did watchtower things. Because our vacation time was spent going to assemblies. And we were still doing field service at, during assemblies. So how was that a vacation? Because it's still watchtower time. But those were considered vacations. So it was like even vacation time got taken over by watchtower time so all we were doing was watchtower 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 up to our eyeballs and that's about it we had about this much of time to spend with us when watchtower was up to our eyeballs you know no fun no no nothing you know we did do a few good things you know like we went fishing a few times um we did go canoeing down a river a couple times um, you know, but that was rare. It wasn't like we got to go ride bike every day growing up or we got to sit, you know, we, we never got to stay home on Saturday and watch Saturday morning cartoons. Never. No. I, I, we would knock on doors and people would answer the doors. They were home you know, you could see them in their house. They they had they were watching cartoons. Kids were outside playing. But we were consumed in watchtower things. Always, always, always. You know, it monopolizes your time. It takes away from genuine family time and turns your family time into watchtower time. And then while you're doing that, they're telling you, can't you do more? Really, th this person with no arms and no legs is a pioneer. So why can't you do more? Th this guy's blind and doesn't have hands. But he rides bike everywhere and and preaches. He's a pioneer. And you're like, you know, make you feel guilty, you know? It's like, where are these people? Are these people real? You know, because there's no way to verify if they're real. You know? And most of the time, I think that they made up those people that they tried to use for examples on what a good Jehovah's Witness did. I think they made them people up. I think they did. You know, because they like to reuse stories. I've seen them do that. You know, this kid died because he didn't take a blood transfusion. God's really going to love him. You know, but 20 years later... The same kid is dying again from not having a blood transfusion. And you're like, wasn't that the kid that died 20 years ago? Wasn't that the same kid? So you take out the bone volume and you look, yeah, that's the same kid. Sure looks like the same kid. Oh, wow, he has the same name too. Isn't that a coincidence? You know? So he died 20 years ago, but it's in the Watchtower again about how this kid died for not having a blood transfusion, and you're like, well, he died 20 years ago, you know, but I guess the newer, newer people don't know that that kid died 20 years ago, you know, so, oh, I guess Mike and Kim put up a, a video, but, um, but I wanted to show you how much time Watchtower monop monopolizes in your life and what it took away from me as a kid. I was never a kid, you know. Um, kids that grow up in there are made into be young adults. You have to act this way, talk this way, dress this way, do everything that your parents tell you. Because if you don't do what your parents do, then you have the elders on your back too. You know, you get a double whammy. You know, older people, a lot, 
some of them have parents in, some of them don't, but I, my parents didn't have their parents in there. So they didn't get, they didn't get ragged on about um, doing this or doing that. They got to do whatever they wanted. And when they weren't at the kingdom hall, they were at home drinking. You know, they had a liquor cabinet, always drinking, always uh, drink. My dad drank every day. <clears throat> and it made him mean. So, what would happen is, my dad would get really mean. I mean, I'll never forget one day, I, would, I was doing the laundry, which shouldn't have been my job anyway, because I had a mother, but um, she didn't, she never did it. So, it became my job. So, I was doing laundry, but I had to start dinner, too. So, when my dad came home from work, he wanted to go take a bath, and the clean towels weren't up in the bathroom yet. And I'm telling you, he, he yelled and screamed about those towels for four days. We, we'd go on our way to the, the kingdom hall, and he was yelling, I mean yelling, about those towels not being up in the bathroom like they should be. Because he's head of the house. And when he wants to take a bath, those towels need to be there. You know, it's too much for him to go down to the dryer and get the towels himself, which would have solved the problem, right? Because other people were doing other things. No, he would just yell and scream about him not being up there, you know. And <clears throat> he would yell and scream in the car all the way to the kingdom hall. He he bang on the steering wheel of the car, bang, bang, you know, beating his fist on the steering wheel and everything, and yelling and calling us pigs and all kinds of stuff. And then um, one time he did that and he broke the steering wheel. And he was like, man, I hit that so hard, I, I just broke the steering wheel. Well, hello? There's no mild temperness, mild temperedness in in my dad at that point in his life. He was a, a dictator, and what he said goes. And I told you before about how, in order to get a friend of mine to spend the night, I had to give my dad a two week notice. So I would have to ask somebody, you know, one of my friends. I'd say, well. Um, two weeks from now, can you come and spend the week, spend the night? And they'd ask their parents, their parents say, yeah, okay. So I tell my dad, okay, so-and-so is coming to spend, um, spend the night next weekend, you know, on a couple weekends away. Well, life happens, right? And so my friend called up and said, well, I'm sorry, something came up and I can't spend the night. I was like, okay, so I go tell my dad, well, she can't spend the night. You know, I got punished for that. Because he said that he, he redid his whole schedule to allow for someone else being in the house that weekend. And I'm thinking, what do you have to reschedule? How does your weekend change at all just because I'm having a friend over how does that change his schedule at all? All it means is I have to cook a dinner for an extra person. But it didn't affect him at all. So why I got punished for that, I have no idea. But as a kid, it made me want to stop even trying to invite people over because of the outrageous rules. And if something did happen, I got in trouble for it. Which, my entire life, that's one thing that I could never stand, is the getting in trouble and having to pay for something that somebody else did. You know, I had nothing to do with it, but I'm paying the price. Now, I don't like that. Nah. If I make a mistake in my life and I have to pay consequences for my mistake, I want it to be because I made the mistake. But I don't want to pay consequences and a price for a mistake someone else made. And that's happened to me several times in my life. And it's like, man, you know, uh-uh. I, I don't like that at all.
I don't. But, but somebody was talking in one of the channels about um, the pain that they go through when they leave the organization. Now, when I left, I did leave when I was young. But I had all the same issues to go through as anybody that leaves. You know, um, I had been taught by Watchtower to that a wife acts and does a certain thing. So a good wife does this. A good wife does that. You know, and I had that mindset. And when you get out into the real world, not only do you have that, but you have other things on top of you also. And a lot of times other people don't appreciate how good you are as a spouse until you've had enough of their junk and you decided to leave. You know, then they'll say, well, you're the best wife I ever had, but I, I know I, I screwed it up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you did. You know, I, I never really ran into, uh, even though I was married several times, I was never married to a, a guy that took marriage as seriously as I did, that was willing to work at keeping it together. You know, if something wrong was happening, you know, they just continued doing the wrong. You know, and I was patient. And a lot of patience and um, a lot of kindness in me then even and I took a whole lot I took a lot before I would call it quits one of my one of my exes who isn't alive anymore told me that <coughs> what do I have to do to get you to leave and I'm like what you know, I, I thought we were going to be married and we were going to work on being married. But see, after six months of being married, he had already found somebody else. And he just wanted me out so he could be with this new girl. And he was doing things on purpose to make me angry so I would want to leave him. And so he could tell people that, oh, my wife left me. No. I wasn't going to make, you know, I was willing to, I was willing to work really hard at keeping a marriage. And he just asked me, what do I got to do to make you want to leave? You know, I don't want to be married. And I'm like, and that's all you got to say, bye. You know, and, you know, all of it was a joke. You know, and I, I felt at that time, man, I got a target on my back. You know, grow up a Jehovah's Witness, and that means I'm a nice person. So I got a target on my back and a sign on my forehead that says this person can be used and manipulated. And I'm like, man, Watchtower strikes again because, you know, Watchtower preys on a certain kind of people and makes you be a certain way. And so when you leave, it's hard to find who you are in, in all that. You're, you're digging through all the stuff going, man, you know, I'm doing this because Watchtower says I should do this. But see, Watchtower doesn't control me anymore. So I got to do things how they work for me. And that doesn't work for me. You know, that doesn't work for me. I, I had, in order to be happy with yourself... You have to be honest and true to yourself. So if you're still living like a double life like you did in Watchtower, and you're trying to be this in this area, but that's not really you. It's how you were told you were supposed to be. Then you're still not living and being honest with yourself as to who you are. When you leave the organization, you have to find out who you are, yourself, 
on your own. And I'm telling you that takes that takes time and you fall on your face a few times, things will go really terrible for you. You get sad. Not to mention that everybody that leaves Watchtower finds out that they've been lied to. That Watchtower told them things that weren't true. So when you leave, you wind up going through a phase where you're really mad. You're real mad at people and you're like, how could they lie to me? Why Why would they lie to me? What do, what do they get out of lying to me? What is about me that people can lie to me and I don't even know they're lying to me? You know, you, you have to learn how to be able to tell if someone's lying to you. You know, it, it's a skill. And when you're in Watchtower, you're so tuned in that you're getting the truth, the truth, the truth. That it doesn't even cross your mind you might be li getting lied to. And that that transfers over into your relationships and marriages. That people can be lying to you and you just don't get it. You know, you have to learn to look at somebody and say, how can you lie right to my face? You know, you got to figure out how to do that. You know, otherwise people are still going to use you when you get out. You got to learn how to pick healthy friends. You got to learn how to know people are lying to you. And you got to get over the anger. And then once you, the, you get over the anger, then you got to deal with the grief of losing everybody you've known your whole entire life or a majority of it. You know, you lose everybody. You find out that times are bad for you and none of your friends are there. And then you realize, well, they only love me if I'm doing what they tell me to do. But if even though I'm not doing anything wrong, if I'm not going to meetings and going into field service and all that, they don't want to talk to me, then what kind of friend are they? You know, if you leave watchtower and you're gone for a year and there ain't no elders knocking on your door saying you know do you need anything can we help you in any way if they're just ignoring you they're not your friend and you know i know it's hard to hang up those people and cut them loose and and all that you know but you gotta cut them loose or it will take your health with with you all that worry and all that grief and all that sadness and depression and all that wears on your body. It wears out your heart. It causes stress in your body and will cause physical problems. You know, you got to learn to cut that loose. You know, don't worry about things. You know, handle things as they come up, but don't worry yourself about the stuff. It took me... It took me a long time to figure out how to do that. You know, how do I not worry? And then I think back now, and I think the first 15 years I was out, I was running on adrenaline. Because, you know, first of all, I was taught that worldly people would mean my death. That's what I was taught growing up, that staying away from worldly people then means that I would have my place in paradise and God would be happy with me. But if I associated with worldly people that I wouldn't have God's approval and I wouldn't go to paradise. You know, that's how it works. And that's what they tell you when you leave or you get disfellowshipped or you disassociate or anything that, you know, God's mad at you, and God won't have anything to do with you, and, and you know, God hates you kind of thing, you know. And that's not true. That's just more lies to control you and manipulate you. God isn't bad because you leave an organization. God still loves you no matter where you go. 
As long as you're faithful to God and following Christ's commands and following Christ's example and doing what he says, God doesn't leave you. No, some people might think that God left them, but they're going through the anger and the grieving and all of that, and it sure feels like that. You know, even Job and King David had times in their life where they would ask God, you know, where are you? How come I haven't heard from you? Don't, don't, don't forget me. You know, don't abandon me. They, they needed to, to know that God was in their life and that he was active in looking out for them. And he was, you know, from reading the Bible, you, he, he was, but a person, a human being feels like you're so distant from him and he, you're not seeing his works in your life. But you have to learn how to look for those things. You have to learn how to listen to the shepherd. You gotta um, learn to see how God works in people's lives. And you know he is there. You learn to recognize that. But it's a learning process. You know, you're not going to just be, you're not going to go to the kingdom hall. And at the kingdom hall, they tell you, oh, God was doing wonderful things. Look, look in the watchtower study it, or the awake. It tells you how great he's been to these people. Well, you're not getting that input all the time. So you have to learn to see it on your own. And that's a process. You know, if you believe in God and you trust in Jesus Christ, get out your Bible and read and read and study it. And he will lead you. You ask him to, he will. And he will teach you. And he will guide you. You know, that Holy Spirit is there to teach us and guide us. And Jesus is active in people's lives too. You know, and and pretty soon you get back on your feet and you feel a whole lot better. But leaving, leaving a cult like that takes some time. And you have to learn to see what is the watchtower teaching affecting my life in this manner. So if something isn't happening right, then you have to look at it and say, is, is it because I'm thinking watchtower-like, or am I not? You know, you have to learn to weed out those watchtower thoughts and, and throw them away. Because you already know they're lying to you. You already know they're misleading you. So you have to take the rest of that junk and throw it away. You know, and it takes time to sort that out. And there's things people go through, everybody goes through sadness over their their family getting split up i i heard from a male that has been out and he said that watchtower still has his wife and two out of his three kids and he wishes that they would come out and wake up and all that but you know there's so many people waking up even elders and and very indoctrinated people wake up. You know, you think about how how if you're an XJW, think about how you were as a JW. You know, we believed it. We were indoctrinated. We were we were all gung ho for Watchtower. You know, so even those people that live like that now have a chance of waking up and 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 leaving. You know whenever, you know, soon, um, a month from now, a year from now, but they still all have the same chance as we did, you know, so we just got to keep trying, got to keep trying and pray for them, you know, we're supposed to pray for our enemies, so we'll, we'll pray for Watchtower too, I, I pray every day that Watchtower falls, <laughs> and it releases all those captives, oh man, and those people, when they leave, they're going to have a hard time, too. You know, those of us that have been out for a long time can look at people when they get out and see the stages that they're in and the things that they're going through. And we have nothing but compassion for you guys. 
we know how difficult it is. I mean, when I left, there was no internet. So it was harder to research things. Research took longer. And there were no other XJWs to talk to. I went 30 years without talking to another XJW. But these days, they're, they're right there. When you leave, you can talk to a, an XJW today. And they will try to help you today. But you have to still go through those stages of, of um, breaking free from Watchtower Think and getting that out of your life and discovering who you really are instead of what Watchtower turned you into. You know, there's a lot of things that happen. And it seems dark and lonely and scary and fearful and, and all that. But you see, Watchtower did that to you on purpose. They know that the things they taught you and the things they told you will make it difficult for you to exist in the real world and make you want to return to where it's a little easier to live. You know, so most people don't go back because they they realize they can't live a lie. You know, you can't go back knowing what you know. You know, so they have to try to make it on their own out of it. But I'm telling you, it's not overnight. And it takes help. I went to therapy twice for different issues that I had. Dealing with the real world, you know. Oh, man. Some things I, being raised in there, I just didn't know how to do. You know, the people that go in there in their 20s, they already have that skill. But the people that are born in, they don't have those skills. Those skills aren't there. So in, if you can't master them on your own, then you need to go to therapy and tell the therapist, listen, I was raised in a cult. And there were certain social skills and um, things that I just didn't learn. And I need help because I don't know how to get I don't know how to get there. How do I do that? You know, you can find find people to talk to. The therapists that I found were really kind, nice people. And they walked me through a plan on how to do those things that I didn't know how to do. And it worked, you know. It worked for me. And I think that it, don't be ashamed to go to therapy. If you need help with something, do it. If you feel suicidal, call suicide hotlines. Lots of good, caring people out in the world, you know, that are willing to help anybody that needs it, you know. So it's always slow going, folks. Don't assume that it's going to happen overnight. It takes time. And I know that when you work through all those things, that you will discover that you have feel such a freedom and like I tell people only a slave can understand what freedom really is and you were a slave and one day you will wake up and feel you are free you know not just be thinking it but you'll wake up and know you are free but it takes a little time to get that out of your your brain and your psyche and, you know, how you judge other people and, and critique yourself. You know, a lot of those things, you got to shake that, you know, and not to worry. One thing, when you leave the organization and you get out in the real world, don't worry about stuff that you have no control over. Just worry about the things you can make a difference on. Because some of those things... There's no way that you can control those things happening or the outcome. So don't worry about those things. Those things fall into place as you wake up and heal yourself. Those will fall into place. Just worry about changing the things that you are able to change. You know, worry about how you're going to stop judging people. Worry about how you're going to stop looking down on other people like you know it all and they don't. 
You know, that's another hard thing to drop. You know, always judging other people. You know, you, you got to learn to quit that. But Watchtower has taught people a lot of bad habits. And it is a scary thing to go through. It is a hard thing to go through. But in the end, you'll be a much better person of it. And you'll feel better about yourself. And everybody around you will feel better about being around you. You know, so take your time. You got to take a deep breath. And say, I can do it. I can do it. Don't, don't. Keep telling yourself, man, I can't do this. This is too much. No, don't do that. It'll just get you swamped down and into negative thinking. Always concentrate on how to heal yourself and make things better for yourself. Because you got to like yourself. you got to like who you are before other people will like you. I'm sure you heard that before, right? It's true, you know? You gotta like who you are. You gotta feel good about yourself. And then other people, they'll, they'll flow to you. <laughs> you say, now that's a happy person. You know, that, that person's been through some stuff, you know. But, you know, we've all been there. All of us. Those dark watchtower days when they monopolized every minute of your day, you know. You couldn't even read a book or go to a movie without thinking, is it Watchtower be happy with this or mad? You know, Watchtower is only eight men. I say, if the Bible doesn't say that you can't go see that movie, go see the movie. If, if the Bible doesn't say not to do something, then you're free to do it. Watchtower is like those Pharisees where they put rules and rules and rules and rules on people until they just smothered. You know, that's what they're doing to people. You know, that's why a lot of people are leaving because of that. But anyway, I've talked long enough. Um, if I forgot to say something or you have any questions, leave it in the comments and we'll talk about it. Or um, if I get enough comments about something, I'll make another video about it. But like I say, relax. Relax, okay? Because every single person that has left the organization goes through the same thing that you're feeling and the same thing you're facing, you know? And it takes time to get past that, but you'll be better for it. Trust me, you know? Life is good after Watchtower. You get to that point where you say, I'm free. Then you'll know what I'm talking about. But until then, just hang on. Keep working on yourself. Don't worry about other people. Don't worry about what they say or what they do. Heal yourself. Because nothing good will happen around you unless you heal yourself. So take care of yourself. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.